and students uh, welcome back to one more session of your aldehydes ketones and carboxylic acid chapter till now we have uh, done many reactions in aldehydes and ketones that is nucleophilic addition reactions nucleophilic addition with loss of oxygen then we will say learn to what are reduction reactions of aldehydes and ketones now let us come back and learn the oxidation reactions of aldehydes and ketones basically what will happen when i oxidize aldehyde or ketone right we very well know aldehyde on oxidation that means oxidation is addition of oxygen to this we get an acid simple i've added oxygen here to aldehyde so aldehyde is an oxidation gives us acids now based on this concept we are going to learn different types of reactions under oxidation reactions so the first reaction which i'm going to teach you a rule this is called pop p o p pop offs pop off rule remember this it's very important pop off rule then i'm going to show you <coughs> because aldehydes because of the presence of this hydrogen they are easily oxidized yes so they they act as reducing agent if they're getting oxidized that means they act as reducing agents yes or no so these are going to reduce right aldehydes are going to reduce rcho are going to reduce i'm talking about aldehyde not ketone at are going to reduce tolens reagent are going to reduce felling solution felling solution and also benedicts benedict solution right only aldehyde now ketones will not respond or they will not reduce them why because of the presence of hydrogen only this because in aldehyde you have this hydrogen because of this they are acting as reducing agents now we are also going to see this third category of reaction that is called halo form reaction halo form reaction this is shown by both aldehydes and ketones I'll be showing that reaction also. So please note it. We'll start with the first type of reaction or first type of rule that is Popoff's rule. Okay. Yes. Now when I speak about Popoff's rule, <coughs> you should first remember one important thing. Right. Now let us write the heading. Pop off rule. Pop off rule. Okay, right. Now, basically, I said aldehydes on oxidation gives me acids. That is not a problem. But Popoff's rule basically speaks about oxidation of ketones, right? So, what does it speak? It speaks about oxidation of ketones. Which type of ketones? It speaks about oxidation of unsymmetrical ketones. Okay, unsymmetrical ketones okay uh, this is the only keyword you have to remember that's it now oxidation of unsymmetrical ketone so what happens suppose if i take a symmetrical ketone let me speak what, what's going to happen what is a symmetrical ketone the ch3 ch2 c double bond o ch2 ch3 this is a symmetrical ketone yes symmetrical ketone now we are trying to oxidize this okay we are trying to oxidize this in the presence of uh, oxidizing agents like kmno4 or k2cr2o7 right all oh, these are oxidizing agents isn't it when you add these oxidizing agent immediately i very well know oxidation is addition of oxygen this is going to break up into equal parts both are symmetrical 2 and 2 isn't it so what do we get i get <coughs> ch3 ch H two COOH plus CH three CH two COOH. It is symmetrical cleavage, not a problem. Nothing. There is no change. But now, what happens when you speak about Popoff's rule? When you speak about symmetrical, unsymmetrical ketone. What is unsymmetrical ketone? There. Are, suppose if I take CH three CH two CH two C double bond O CH two CH three. Now here, how many carbons do you have? Three. How many carbon chain you have? Two. Now according to Popoff's rule, when this is getting oxidized in the presence of KMnO4 or K2Cr2O7, observe carefully, the carbonyl compound comes out or breaks with, or it's going to come out with your smaller alkyl group. That is important. What does it come out? The carbonyl compound comes out with a smaller alkyl group, and you get CH3. CH2 COOH. Yes, the leftover. Okay, fine. I am going to write it as CH3 CH2 CH2 COOH. 
so according to pop pop soon whenever unsymmetrical uh, uh, ketones are participating the carbonyl group comes out with the smaller alkyl group and the next is getting oxidized okay so this is your pop pop soon please note it Right. Let us come back and uh, do the next oxidation reaction of aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids. So in aldehydes, as I said, <coughs> it's going to uh, like uh, when in the presence of uh, potassium dichromate or came in no four, we have seen the pop-off rule, isn't it? Where the uh, carbonyl compound is going to come out with the alkyl group, which has less in number of carbon atoms. That is what is the definition. Please note it. Now let us come back and see. Tollens region test and filling solution test. Right? What do we? Do? How? When do we do this in the lab? Whenever your teacher, if she has given you to test whether the functional group is aldehydes or ketones, we perform this reaction. Right? Basically, aldehydes only respond to Tollens test and filling test. Ketones will not respond. Please remember. So, whenever you are doing a functional group test, aldehydes and ketones, Tollens test. Tollens test and filling solution test. This will give and ketones will not respond. Remember that. Yes. <clears throat> so whenever we do on a Tollens reagent test, basically I said aldehydes can be easily oxidized. Yes or no? Yeah. To what, to what are they getting oxidized? They're getting uh, oxidized to acids. So when they're getting oxidized to acids, aldehydes are better reducing agents. Yes, so they're going to reduce your Tollens reagent. So what we are going to learn now, what this is called Tollens reagent test. So we'll first prepare Tollens reagent and then go back to your uh, this is reducing uh, nature of that. Tollens reagent is basically prepared when your lab attender prepares. You know, we uh, we try to prepare prepare Tollens reagent in a lab freshly prepared Tollens reagent. We prefer that so that you get the silver mirror. So let us see. Uh, and what is other name given for that? This is called silver mirror test. Silver mirror test. Okay. Now for the silver mirror, first you need to take silver nitrate. To this, you want to add ammonium hydroxide. There is exchange of ions here. What happens? Silver hydroxide and ammonium nitrate. A double displacement reaction. So what do I get? I get Ag OH. <coughs> Okay, plus ammonium nitrate. Done. So the, even if I don't keep the back, it's not a problem because the valency is already one and plus one and minus one. Now this silver hydroxide till it precipitates out till it forms the uh, coordinate com uh, complex. You again add uh, to that uh, particular uh, silver hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide till that precipitates. So again you take silver hydroxide. You're going to add ammonium hydroxide to this. Now this whole thing forms a coordinate covalent complex. Please remember how to write. Put a square bracket first. Yeah. <coughs> now first silver metal atom. Then the ligand. You want to write NH3. Right. You want to take two. And one forms the cation. The other forms. If I take this an anion. OH when it dissociates. Yes, the leftover comes out as water molecule, two moles. If you balance the reaction, you get two moles of water molecule. Now, this is your Tollens reagent. How do you name? This is your Tollens reagent. Name it. If your lab, your examiner uh, in your practical exam, if they ask you to write the formula for Tollens reagent, please, you can write this. This is called ammonical silver nitrate solution. Basically, <coughs> Um, it has you got it from your uh, nitrate isn't it silver nitrate so it is called ammonical silver nitrate solution done now what are you going to do now when you are adding this ammonical silver nitrate what do you do you take this tolerance reagent to test you you add your aldehyde isn't it put a function group to test whether it is aldehyde or ketone now let us take that that is right tolerance test now, when I take that Tollens uh, reagent, NH3, taken twice, 
okay plus yeah i'm going to add uh, separately oh minus i'm going to show you separately and then i'm adding an aldehyde cho now i'm here not balancing it perfectly but uh the way okay maybe i'll just let me write and then show you now we very well know this is acting as which agent reducing agent but what is happening to this it is getting oxidized so aldehyde gets oxidized to an acid ionic reaction then after that your silver is getting reduced now this is getting oxidized now silver is getting reduced to a metallic silver this is your metallic silver so this is what forms as a, a silver mirror test isn't it metallic silver settles or gets deposited on the walls of that particular test tube metallic silver this is what is your silver mirror test now after that ammonia comes out yes ammonia then the leftover water fine so if i balance if i see the further reaction this comes as two now this is four mm, this is again two right and if i balance the earlier one uh, this is two and that oh okay this is three right now this is your silver mirror test first important thing you are going to take or uh, pick up silver nitrate and an ammonium hydroxide till the silver forms a coordinate complex you keep adding ammonium hydroxide now you get a uh, dirty white ppt this is what <coughs> this is a dirty white ppt this this also is dirty white ppt white with ppt till you get after that you're going to pick that tolerance region and add your aldehyde now aldehyde i said it's going to get oxidized oxidized into your um, carboxylic acid and the silver which is there in the tolerance region gets reduced right now this has valence you know this has become zero isn't it yeah zero valency so zero so it metallic silver then ammonia which is there comes out as ammonia and water so this is your tolerance region test please remember whenever your examiner is asking you to show the reduction or this particular test you have to start from here this whole thing is your tolerance test